efforts to produce a satisfactory seaplane were not always very successful. This, one of the first water planes, had unfortunately more affinity for the water than for the air. Meanwhile, land planes continued to assume many weird and wonderful forms. These are interesting, but for obvious reasons are not seen in flight. The same also applies to this, the first but not the last aerial flapper. This flight provides an interesting duel. The gravity has by far the bigger pull. We now salute Monsieur Blerio, inappropriately seen on crutches before his great cross-channel flight. Here are the cliffs of France, which he crossed on the morning of the 25th of July, 1909. The few casual optimists gathered to see him leave show how little faith the world then had in the conquest of the air. We do not see this gallant gentleman chugging his way across the sea at 35 miles an hour. Our next view is Dover Castle, taken a few minutes before Blerio's landing, which marked the virtual end of England as an island. We say goodbye to him on his way to a triumphal party. He is taking his second chance today by trying to get there in that car. 1913. Flying has now become a profession and the first school of training for pilots was formed by Messrs. Vickers at Brooklands in this year. This type, the one in the background, was familiarly known among pilots as the Longhorn after the cow of that name. This aerial cow seems to take a long time to pull off the ground, but no doubt the thing was good at Brooklands in those days. Here comes the old vegetarian. I hope that was what the pilot called her when she glassed a lurch on landing. 1914. We start the war period with one of the first Royal Flying Corps machines, the BE. This pilot and mechanic seem to be quite modern, and the cherry smile on the pilot's face betokens confidence in a new and reliable aeroplane. From this time onwards, aircraft assume more conventional outlines. This Bristol fighter is off to Straff an imaginary Zeppelin. Forget the model and try to imagine Warnford in his machine on a dark night searching the sky for a huge enemy radar. This war formation of 1918 typifies the advance made in the art of flying and in the construction of aircraft which enabled pilots to line up in the air like soldiers on parade. We haven't shown you any seaplanes yet. This picture was taken at Malta just after the war. Battleships, seas, sky and aircraft make a beautiful picture and also show a new coordination between air and sea. This coordination is carried further by the plane on the deck of an aircraft. Nineteen nineteen. All Cock and Brown, who made the first aeroplane flight across the Atlantic. 
Whatever publicity may have done for other aviators, nothing can efface the irrefutable record that these two British airmen crossed the Atlantic in a heavier-than-air machine eight years before the next attempt was made. This epic flight started so modestly that this is the only pictorial record of the famous Vickers Vimy machine in flight, taken on its last test before crossing the Atlantic, 12 years ago.